This is Kat Sturz from rockingyourpath.com and it's another Fast Action Fridays. My special guest today is Ariana Newcomer, who does something that, oh, I wish I could be able to do. I am, I love singing. Nobody wants to listen. Even my cat would run away. <laughs> and she's got an awesome story. Um, she is known as the voice coach's voice coach because of the depth of her knowledge and understanding of the physical, um, psychological, and spiritual aspects of voice. She has taught voice since 1995 and works with clients online and in person. She is get get a load of this. She is a Harvard graduate, a massage therapist former professional opera singer, and she holds two coaching certification and is an internationally published best-selling author. And just to throw in something else, she's the mom of two. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Can you give us just a little bit more background? I know there's more, uh, like what took you out of um, the professional opera environment? Well, in, in, Performing at opera and teaching singing, I thought I had really found the thing that spirit meant for me to do. Uh, and I considered my singing voice as the voice of my soul. But mm. I actually lost my voice. I had a voice injury and had to stop performing. And it was absolutely, absolutely devastating. So not only had I lost what I thought was my true purpose in the world, but I lost the thing that was my most direct connection with the divine. And it was my greatest joy in life outside of my kids. So oh. it was truly a dark time. But as with these things, very often they, they come to, uh, you get to make lemonade. <laughs> the lemonade. <laughs> so what I needed to realize was that my marriage was toxic and that my speaking voice was not honored and that I needed to reclaim my speaking voice as the voice of my soul. And I had a bigger work to do in the world. So my journey back to a healthy singing voice has taught me, and through a divorce, <laughs> has taught me so many things about how to bring our whole soul's voice into the world through our speaking voice that I now am working to empower women's voices in particular, so that we can actually create true partnership with men. And then we can all have true partnership with the planet so that we can have a world we can continue to live on. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, women's voices are critical in creating this change that we need to, to bring about this expansion of consciousness of humanity. and. Mm -hmm. Creating real partnership with men is a critical piece of that. And right. <clears throat> because women have been considered inferior and our voices have been shamed and shushed and silenced for so long, we don't even realize sometimes when we are apologizing for speaking up or speaking out, when we don't speak up or speak out, or when we as women actually say that women who are speaking with power and confidence are bitchy or too aggressive or pushy. Oh, they sound, oh. they don't sound like women. So, right. And that starts often very young. I mean, I grew up knowing deep inside me, I was a bit supposed to be a leader of some kind, but many times I was like cut down. I remember in like, fourth or fifth grade in grade school being pulled aside by a teacher's uh for a class president vote and she told me i just want you to realize you know it's really not um courteous for you to vote for yourself and i doubt that she said that to the boy that was running against me yeah you know it, it, and then we're, of course we're talking in the 19 um well, the 1950s or early 60s at that time. And I shut down my voice for a long time after that. I got very good at observing things and I came out of that later on. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, that was devastating to me. Even though I didn't believe her, I did kind of 
fall back and and I voted for myself that day, but I felt a bit shamed for doing so and discourteous and Right. And you internalize that message. And as mm-hmm. you said, you shut down your voice for years. And I call those voice stories. Mm. So, Can you? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we're going to get to go into more detail on all of these in our bonus section. But uh, let's go through your fast action tips right now. And for those who are new to the program, fast action tips for today always mean tips that you can implement in 15 minutes or less, or at least get a jump on a good feeling for what they are. So Ariana, take us through your tips. So one of the crucial things to understand about your voice is that you don't hear your own voice accurately. You think you're using a lot more expression than you are usually. And universally, I get this from my clients. When I reflect back to them how they actually sounded, they say, I thought I was sounding way over the top. And I say, well, no. (laughs) So tip number one, is play with your voice to increase your expression so that you can create deeper connection. Oh, that's great. And easiest way to do that is to read out loud for 10 minutes, three to five days a week from a Dr. Seuss book or another children's book or some silly poems so that you can play with different voices for different characters. So use high voices and use (laughs) old voices and use angry voices and use silly voices and Give yourself permission to go for over the top. And you're going to have to practice because your voice stories are telling you you can't do that. That's probably why when I got into community theater and started acting on stage, my voice from inside started coming out better because I wasn't afraid to be these other characters who have, I've played a large range from comic to you know, dead serious to angry and uh, melodramatic. Um, so yeah, good to know that that's brings, helping my voice. That brings up a great point because a lot of times when I ask my clients to do this, they say, oh, well, that doesn't feel like me. Nothing is going to come out of your voice that isn't you on some level. Mm-hmm. You have all kinds of parts of yourself that have been shushed and silenced and shamed and told they shouldn't vote for themselves told girls should be seen and not heard, told nice girls don't toot their own horns. Or um, for men, men have a voice story, which is, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure that you understand that any voice that you use actually comes out of a part of you. So you need to give yourself permission to voice all the parts of you. Oh, that's great. All right, what's the next tip? Next tip is to really appreciate and acknowledge yourself for all of your life experience. Women are so good at saying, oh, I need another degree or I should get another certification or I need more experience before I can da, 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 write that book, charge higher fees, go for that, mm-hmm. that uh, promotion. And yeah. what you need to know is your life experience informs everything that you have to offer. So own the value that your life experience adds to your work, to your life, to your coaching practice, to whatever business it is that you do. It is your unique special sauce right. that makes you most effective. So right. Just that you and write self-appreciation daily for seven days. And there isn't a set worth to what services we do. It's it's still personal. You know, I deliberately target a market that's not ready for six, seven figure uh, home-based solopreneur businesses, because I think it's a huge group that's being underserved. Uh, And I keep that in mind when I'm setting my prices, but my prices are considered uh, low by some and high by others, but they're prices I'm comfortable with. And I do raise them over time, depending on what I'm um, offering and bringing more of my own experiences into that. So that's a great tip. I love that. All right. I know you've got uh, two more. So what's the next one? Okay. The next one is for your voice, practice belly breathing. Breath is voice and your breath comes from the diaphragm, which is the muscle of breathing, which is a dome-shaped muscle under your lungs. It goes down as you inhale, and it goes up as you exhale. 
A lot of people think it's the other way. Yeah. A deep breath needs to go into your belly, not up into your chest like this. <sighs> Lots of people think that's a deep breath. It's not. No. Deep breath is breathing into your belly. And in the free gift that I have for you, there's actually a link to a video where I do some training on belly breathing. So if you want to go to voiceyourvalue.com, you can sign up to get my free Voice Your Value ebook. And there is a link there to the video to show you how to do belly breathing. And I'm also going to put that into the open seat. So even those watching the replay can see that if they can't see the chat roll, which comes and goes on, on replays lately. <laughs> and this is also your number one go-to technique for when you're nervous. If you're getting on blab or you're getting on stage or you have to do a presentation, belly breathing is actually going to calm your nervous system and help you not only speak more effectively because breath is voice, but you'll be calmer and more centered. Right. That's great. I still have problems doing the correct breathing of in and out when I exercise. I do it fine when I'm meditating. I do it fine when I'm consciously calming myself down, uh, like before stepping out on stage or whatever. But mm -hmm. what, doing it correctly when I'm exercising, just <laughs> I need a lot more practice with that. And right now, my diaphragm is so sore from uh, having this uh, chest congestion and heavy coughing, coughing that yes yeah, yeah. Oh, right yeah. So I know my I know I own a diaphragm at the moment <laughs> yes <laughs> that's all right unfortunate an unfortunate way to connect with it but you should gain a connection with your diaphragm because it is really really important it's the foundation of your voice right what's the fourth fast action tip this is for all of you who are talking with clients on the phone, doing any kind of online coaching or training, or um, it, that's not in a video situation, especially. When you're on the phone, all people have to connect with you is your voice. They don't see your makeup, they don't see your nice scarf, they don't see your, uh, you know, your jewelry, they don't see your facial expressions. So all they have to connect with you is your voice. And because most of you are holding your voice back, you are not using the amount of expression that you really need in order to connect with your listeners. So I recommend that you stand up. Stand up to deliver your phone or online coaching sessions, your webinars, your telesummit interviews, even your talks with prospective clients. Wow, I wouldn't have considered that. I know I've got my a treadmill set up and I've moved a dresser over so I can put things there, but that makes a lot of sense because you just, you, I guess you're more prone to expressing outward when you're standing. Your is, that, voice, is that the idea? Yeah, your voice will automatically be more energized and your body is your instrument. Wow. You're going to breathe more deeply when you're standing. And if you're moving around a little bit, that's going to energize your voice and mm -hmm. give you permission to get more expression into your voice, which is what you need. What kind of expression is most often missing from when we speak to others? What's most often missing is, uh, is pitch variation, enough pitch variation and enough passion enough excitement in the voice because most of us have learned to deliver ourselves kind of like this so it's a little bit monotone it's kind of flat and you'll notice when i start speaking like this i i don't have no expression in my voice and all of a sudden i'm much less interesting aren't i right and i think some of us may uh, mistake loudness for animation do you find that the case? Right. Yes. And they are two different things. So using pitch variation, like allowing the pitch to rise and then allowing it to fall and allowing it to come back up again. And you can use a little bit of a softer tone sometimes to get people to lean in. Or you can use even more excitement and passion. And now I did just get louder. But variation is what the brain needs to pay attention our brains are hardwired to tune out things that are too much the same 
That's that's like, awesome. You have got to change it up in order to keep the attention of the people that you're talking with and so that they can remember and follow what you're talking about. So if I'm getting you right and watching you express this in the way you do it, managing your voice more consciously and pairing that with body movement with the people you're interacting with, whether it's live or an online uh, environment like we're doing here is like a double plus plus to making sure we're communicating clearly and concisely. Yes. And <laughs> it's all about, it's all about engaging your listeners and it's about giving them what they need, what their brains need and mm. what their hearts need to connect with you. So speaking from the heart is another thing that I teach my clients. Right. I'm so with you. Um, I do a lot of intuition type work. I'm very connected with the universal spirit. I, I fully agree that your voice is that. And I think that's why music is the universal language. You know, the notes are the same no matter what language you're in, right? Yes, yes. And I, I'm actually very spiritually oriented. One I have a project I'm working on right now. So if you get on my mailing list by getting the ebook, you're going to get first notice when I finish my Healing Your Soul's Voice Guided Meditation. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll, I'm heading there right after here to sign yeah, up. <laughs> align your energy center so that you can bring all that information from the lower chakras into the voice and from the higher chakras into the voice. So you can speak in the voice of your soul, which is not your normal voice because right. your normal voice is held back by your voice stories. I want to point out something that Cindy uh, Freeman, who is right it for you, is saying in the chat role. She said, when I was in sales, I was taught to put a mirror in front of myself to make sure there was a smile or at least a pleasant face so as to have it expressed in my voice. What are your comments on that? Uh, people can hear a smile. It's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. So not only do you want to be standing up, but you want to be feeling happy. So before you get on the phone or before you get on your webinar, you want to do some practices to warm up your body, dance around the room to your favorite music <laughs> so that you can just get yourself into that happy place. And your voice will be more energized and you will feel great and settled and then do your belly breathing and get on and there you go all right well those were great tips and we're into the second part of the program so i want to know a little bit more about your background and your story using your voice losing your voice getting it back uh, tell us more well what happened in my marriage was kind of a parable for the way that women are considered and treated, especially when we are home with children in our culture. And as far as we may have come in this country, we haven't come far enough. Women are still devalued. So when I first married my kid's dad, I thought I had a true partner. And in the very beginning, he really, uh, you know, helped with the cooking and the laundry and had one day a week when he took our first son so that I could have a day for myself. But as we had the second child and as, you know, life went on, uh, he became more and more uh, kind of resentful. And in our divorce, his his phrase was, I didn't pull my weight in the marriage. <laughs> this is just an illustration of how our culture thinks. Now, I always worked part-time and my opera career was part-time because I was raising two small boys. After the first couple of years of voice training, I started teaching. And so I was always earning more than I was spending on my voice. And I was still doing massage therapy and I did all of the volunteering in the schools, um, the kids chauffeuring, the um, helping with homework, the laundry, the housekeeping, the shopping, the, you know, all that stuff. But I didn't pull my weight. 
mm-hmm. because in his mind, I didn't earn enough money. Mm-hmm. Wow, I can relate to that, but in a slightly different way. With me, it was my ex-husband's parents that really dishonored my voice. I mean, in 25 years of marriage, I was rarely spoken to uh, in our own environment. And we ran a dairy cash crop farm where I worked side by side with them morning and night milking cows, you know, driving tractors and stuff. Now, if they met me, um, in town, uh, in a public place, they might say something, but usually during the day, the basic part of the day, I was a non-entity other than to be a little Cinderella, uh, helper on the farm. And they really resented when I started doing freelance writing and a few things, which I still fit around my farm duties. And I remember very clearly when I was elected Farm Bureau Queen back in the 1980s, like mid 80s, and at the banquet, I was a big surprise to me. My daughter was uh, just a baby yet. My son was probably three. And their only comment to me leaving the banquet hall that night was not to me, but to my husband who said, because it was getting late in the night, and all they said was, make sure you're, you're up in time for chores in the morning. <laughs> It's like, so, really? <laughs> my my voice was really devalued in my marriage and not just my singing voice because my husband, even though he claimed that he was my greatest supporter for my singing career, actually subtly undermined me in all kinds yeah. of ways. And my speaking voice was really undermined and devalued in my marriage. So I had to I had to really come back to myself and reclaim my own sense of my value as a person, as a woman, as a mother, because mm-hmm. of that shaming and devaluing that happened in the marriage. And I know so many women for whom this has happened. And mm-hmm. even though, you know, I don't think my ex-husband intended to become that kind right. of person. But it's the culture. It's the air we breathe. It's the water we swim in. It's the default right. we go to. So we need to be conscious of that. And as women, we have to stop participating in that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm with you. I don't think my ex-husband intended to support that, but he did nothing to stop it. Uh, and that hurt. Do you think that the the disrespect that you were getting uh, from your husband contributed in any way to you having a a voice injury? Oh, absolutely it did. (laughs) One of the pieces of my voice injury was that I had acid reflux. Ah. And that came from the dysfunctional marriage, from having my, my stomach kind of tied in a knot all the time. And also from swallowing things that I needed to say, but had to hold back because the kids were in the room. Now we had plenty of fights, I have to admit, and more in front of the kids than I'm, than I'm proud to say. But I still held so much back that mm-hmm. acid reflux and mm-hmm. that constant tension in the house all the time. And you know, wondering when is the next you know, shaming statement gonna come from right. the person who is supposed to be loving and supporting me. Uh, no. So that was a huge piece of it. Yeah. By the time I had left, I had uh, grown a pretty successful uh, book writing career uh, part time and doing some local reporting and magazine writing while still working on the family farm um, and done very well. But I ended up walking away from that. You know, I when I look back now and realize how far I came in the Uh, traditional book publishing industry. I mean, I'm published by the largest, uh, by Writer's Digest books with a book about, you know, marketing your writing, (laughs) you know, and I walked away from that because I mistook um, honoring myself and my desire to not cause waves in the family. Uh, So I let go of something that was something that I should have, uh, stayed with and now I'm rebuilding that 
Yeah. And that your family should have supported you in. Right. Yeah. Any last tips for us as we come up to uh, close to the top of the hour? Well, uh, holding your voice back can make you sick. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I think that's an important one. Yeah. Yeah. And we are so conditioned as women to hold our voices back. So. Are there any specific illnesses associated with that or is that different for everybody? Well, it can be different uh, for everybody. It, for me, it was certainly acid reflux. I also had this very, very strange thing where I literally could not hear that I wasn't singing on pitch in a certain part of my range. So my brain had actually blocked out certain frequencies. Probably it was the, the sort of mid range of the frequencies of my husband's voice is my guess. Oh, wow. I had to retrain my brain's ability to hear my own voice accurately. So there are a lot of different ways in which holding our voices back makes, can make you sick. But also when you hold your voice back, you're holding yourself back because your voice is you on the most essential level. It is your unique instrument of communication and connection. It is the voice of your soul, the voice of your essence. So uh -huh. when you hold it back, you're not honoring yourself. You're right. small out of stories that somebody else told you or that the culture told you that aren't true for you. And we're not talking about being uh, brass or bitchy or over the top, um, any of that. We're just talking about being um, honoring your own voice and your ability to express yourself Means effectively, right? Fully, authentically self-expressed means sometimes being bitchy and angry and over the top. Okay. But not all the time. What I want from my clients always is to restore your options because your voice stories have held your voice inside a box. And you need to break the box open so that you have the option to express your whole self which is not to say that I'm going to come onto a lab and start talking like a crazy person and just come kind of <laughs> You know, I can, that would be not appropriate for this situation. So still it's being appropriate, but it's giving yourself a greater range of expression instead of holding yourself into this narrow little range that doesn't give you the option to express all of who you are. And we need all of you to be present in the world for us to create the change that we need. That's such awesome advice. Well, if you and Cindy at Write It For You are not connected, I know she's going to be contacting you because Cindy does a wonderful program called Purpose Talk Radio. And uh, what you are sharing is definitely something I know Cindy will want to share with her listeners as well. Um, I have absolutely loved what you shared today. It uh, brought some things that I wasn't really clear on uh, to much greater uh, clarity, which I love. You can bet I'm going to be signing up for your special gift. It's still in the guest seat there. And for those who are only listening and can't uh, read it, let me, let me read out the actual link. And I'm going to pull this over so I can still look at the screen here. And to get... Ariana's free gift, which is Voice Your Value ebook, How to Own Your Value and the Value of the Transformation You Provide So You Can Speak with Power and Confidence. Go to http colon two forward slashes voice your value. That's all uh, together with no spaces dot com. Thank you again, Ariana. I look forward to having you as a guest again in the future. This has been absolutely awesome. Any last words for, uh, from you before we sign off? Just give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to voice your whole authentic self. And you usually we need support in order to change the habits of speech, habits of a lifetime. But do the tips that I gave you today. Grab the ebook. Start there. It's a great first place to begin. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we are at the top of the hour. It's 11 o'clock here in uh, the Eastern time zone. I happen to be in Michigan. Where are you, uh, Ariana? 
I'm in California on the Central Coast. Oh, you're on the on the West Coast. Okay. Uh, again, <laughs> again, this is Kat Sturtz with Fast Action Fridays. And you can visit me on my website, rockingyourpath.com. I want to remind you to keep rocking your unique path to success.